You walk into the tavern and you see what sort of looks like a pirate version of a medieval TGI Fridays. Like a typhoon sort of washed a bunch of crap into the building, uh, like barrels and all kinds of flotsam and jetsam, and then they just kind of started nailing it all together and nailing it to the walls. There's barrels everywhere, and everywhere you look, you see little potted cactuses. So I was in Hobby Lobby buying crap, as I do, and uh, I got kind of inspired. I saw that they had these little wooden barrels, and, uh, and I cleaned them out. I grabbed all of them, because uh, I just, little wooden barrels, like, when am I not going to use those? I, I had a fight in a uh, warehouse recently in my game, and I really wish that I had a bunch of little wooden barrels. But I also got inspired by the little dollhouse stuff. Um, I'm working on kind of like an epic tavern thing. More of that to come, but um, I, uh, I wanted to make some little plants and stuff too. So I grabbed some stuff to make that. Uh, lots of barrels little to make little wooden tables with barrel bases and other stuff to make like little potted plants. But these little wooden things are super, super cheap. Like the barrels were $2 for the whole bag. So I, I grabbed a bunch of them, I cleared them out. And then the little wood cutoffs are not expensive either. I have a bunch of them, I still have a bunch left over. But I'll use them eventually for something. But uh, I'm not gonna paint these at all, I'm just gonna stain them. Well, I am gonna paint the little bands on the barrels, but I'm just gonna stain up the wood and kind of distress it, kind of like texture it to make it look more like a, uh, a pirate table. So first off, I'm gonna give these guys a stain and uh, I'm just using some furniture polish. Um, I have a, uh, some old English dark, dark wood kind of furniture polish scratch remover stuff that I like. And, uh, and then I'll maybe mix some, some walnut oil into that to kind of like tone down the stain a little bit. I think that I tried one with just the straight furniture polish and it was a little too dark. So I eventually added some walnut oil and kind of toned down the stain a little bit to make it a little bit lighter color. So after I had everything stained up how I wanted it, I got to work painting the little bands on these guys. And then I'm just going to use some kind of dark uh, me metal, actual metallic paint to, uh, to paint the bands on. And I think I found a technique that works pretty well where I'll take the little barrel and then I'll put it up against my finger and then I'll sort of rotate it against my finger and then hold the brush at like almost a like 90 degree angle, like 45, 90 degree angle, and then kind of let the, the rotating do the work instead of the uh, eyeballing it and, and painting it, painting it. Just kind of letting my, my finger, letting my uh, brush glide over it using my finger. And this is definitely the most time consuming, tedious part of this project. The best way I think to do it is to do the bands on to the two bands on one side and then uh, put that guy down and go to another barrel where the other side is already dry and then just kind of rotate them like that against your finger and then um, let your finger do the work make sure that you have a nice uh, fine tip on your uh, a point on your brush too when you're doing this you don't want to spend all this time doing the staining and then have a, a big old glob of paint where it just ruins the, uh, the stain. So now I'm going to start creating some texture on the tabletops and uh, the stain really makes the wood grain pop out but that uh, that's that's nice and everything but this wood grain is not to scale at all so I actually want to hide some of the wood grain so first off I'm gonna just put some kind of squirrel marks on top of the table like to make these guys look like they've been used and uh, and that there's been a lot of pirates like hanging out in this bar with sharp objects just kind of roughing up these tables 
the more squirrel marks, the, the rougher, the more uh, abused these tables look, the better. I'm also gonna take some chunks out of the sides of it with my X-Acto. And it's time to restain to bring out all that distressing. And don't worry if it looks a little too dark at this point because we're going to sand it back down later. Now I'm going to go in and cut some little planks out of these guys. Um, so I, I want the tops of the tables to look like they were thrown together from, I don't know, like the side of a ship or something. But I'm going to go ahead and, and create some uh, little grooves in these guys and I'm not trying to cut through them I'm just trying to kind of score them just to create the effect that they're sort of uh, patched together boards um, be careful don't cut your fingers off you know um, I'm using the, the coffee sticks and uh, and just using it as a guide to make these but I'm not sure that this is the safest way to do this but you're not you're not putting a ton of pressure on it, you're just kind of scoring it, just sort of running the blade across it to create the, the effect. Don't, don't push too hard, don't cut your fingers off. If you do cut yourself, just wipe the blood into the tables. It won't look out of place at all, it'll add to the effect. and I'm going to restain them again. Now it's all about just roughing these guys up enough until I'm satisfied that they look like they've been abused enough. But after a while, the wood grain starts to be hidden and uh, we keep all the color and you can see some of the wood grain but um, it's pretty much hidden by all the squirrel marks. Next I'm going to go ahead and pin these guys. Um, I'm just going to use a little teeny tiny drill bit that's about the size of a paper clip and then uh, make a little hole and then put the piece of paper clip in there and attach those to the tabletops. Um, if you wanted your little barrels to do double duty and maybe have them where you could detach them and, uh, and have the, uh, the tabletops be sort of modular where they can snap on. This is a good way to do this. You just put the little pin into the tabletop side and glue it in there, and then uh, it'll sort of snap into the little barrel, and then you can take it off when you don't want to use it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and super glue mine together and the little pin is gonna reinforce that um, connection just in case these guys get dropped or something on the floor. Um, I've already done a lot of work on these guys so um, it only takes like a couple minutes to um, reinforce everything with the pin so I'll go ahead and do that. And if all you were interested in was the little uh, barrels and tables, you can stop now. <laughs> I'm going to start getting into the cactuses. The rest of the video is going to be about making little cactuses. So first off, I got all these little bowls. Um, I, could, I wish I had grabbed more of these. I, I really like them. Later, I, I ended up wanting to make lots and lots of little cactuses. But um, I'm going to do the same thing with these. I'm just going to stain them up. And uh, you could paint them, but I, I feel like having the wood grain, it just looks so good. 
And uh, in my mind, I was kind of picturing like an arid region, like, I don't know if you know this, like guys, um, when you when you water your plants, they they don't like to be sitting in water. And, uh, and then if you have like a wood pot and there's you're pouring water in it, it's gonna destroy the wood. So heads up, especially cactuses. Cactuses do not like a lot of water. So I thought, you know, if this is an arid region, maybe they make their little pots out of um, wood and just because it's it's easy even though they're surrounded by sand that they um, they just like the look of these little wood pots and then they like little cactuses and they don't need a lot of water so I kind of kept that in mind when I was designing them later that they needed to be very arid looking plants and uh, that would be the only reason that they would be in little wood bowls so I had a few ideas and uh, We'll start with, we'll go from cheapest to most expensive because the last one, like the little cactuses, costs more than all of the parts, all of the wood parts combined. So first um, I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue and then I'm just gonna put a little dab down the bottom of these bowls and then I'm gonna take some uh, moss and, and put it down in there and this dried out moss, it, it looks, um, you know, it, it looks like a, a dried out arid plant. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of sprinkle some sawdust around in the side. And the sawdust just, it, it looks like, um, when it dries, it looks like loamy soil. It looks like kind of arid soil. And the peat moss is super cheap. Um, you can find it anywhere, like any um, any craft store, you know, like Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever. Um, but okay, getting up in price a little bit more, um, I found these little sort of potpourri. They're uh, dried flowers, and they're supposed to be used for soap making. Like they, they actually smell really nice. If I was gonna make some soap. It, sounds kind of wonderful to have these in the soap um, but uh, I'm just gonna use these as sort of like dried out little um, plants and they, they do have that dried out plant look but um, the, the let's see the bag of these was five dollars and I'll use them for something at some point I'm not worried about it but the I didn't actually like how these guys looked uh, as as little potted plants, they actually looked more like a bowl of salad. They kind of came out looking more like a bowl of salad, but um, it's it's another option. Next up, the most expensive option: um, the little railroad model scale cactuses that I bought, and. These were like $10, but you could definitely make something like this out of polymer clay. I just decided to save myself some time and pay the $10 to get some little cactuses that were already made, but you could totally make some yourself. And I think that these objectively look the best out of all the little plants that I made. And they ended up being my favorite little cactuses too. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna plop these guys down in a little puddle of super glue and then sprinkle some of the sawdust around them to kind of soak up the super glue and create that soil effect. Next I'm going to pin these little guys to the little bowls um, and I mean they are super glued down it's really good but having that little pin in there just I don't know it makes me feel better about it that if they get dropped because uh, I'm a little bit of a klutz uh, that they won't just explode into a thousand pieces.
and just add some cool little detail, I decided to take some little uh, crushed up lava rocks that I had um, and then put them around the little bases on these guys. And I actually have some cactuses that look like this in my window. They have little lava rocks around the base. And these little guys are actually soft and uh, brittle enough that you can just break them with your fingers or just use like a piece of pliers and uh, break them into little pieces and plop them down around the bases. And even though super glue does not have a long working time, it does have a working time. Um, you can put some down and then it, it takes like, I think five minutes to actually cure. So you can kind of uh, push it around a little bit with like a toothpick or something and um, get it to where you need it before it actually completely cures and dries. After the super glue has dried, I'm just going to use a uh, brush and then brush off the excess and you can see what they look like after the super glue is dried and you have the kind of soil texture left. And while the other cactuses are pretty easily sculptable, sculpting something like this or the, the other tall cactuses would be a pain. It would be a serious pain in the ass. So it's kind of worth your, worth your money to not have to sacrifice so much of your time to have these large cactuses already done for you. And they, they look cheesy now, but after, um, after I texture them, they look really good. And the uh, wild card, which I actually did really like, was to take some of the dried out little buds and then turn those into something that looks like, um, I mean, it looks like some kind of cactus, like, it, what am I thinking of? It kind of looks like an artichoke, actually, like a giant artichoke, but that could totally be a cactus. And now the payoff, the really fun part, um, adding the needles to the little plastic armatures. And uh, I'm not going to use super glue for this part because, well, I mean, it should be kind of obvious, but the super glue, it, it, when it uh, cures, it can get super hot and then it can um, uh, sort of melt the static grass. So I'm just going to use like a strong um, PVA glue to glue the little pieces of um, static grass to these guys to create the needles. And you can put down like little drops of super glue and put static grass on them, it, it's fine. But on a, a big piece of plastic like this, I, I always tend to err on the side of caution when I'm using super glue just because it can uh, melt things. And uh, also it sticks to your fingers and it, uh, it was designed by the military to stick to fingers, to stick to skin, and not as much to plastic, so there's that too. I'm going to put some on these little guys too because they're just looking a little bit bald. But that's it. Um, I really like these guys. I think they came out looking super cool. Um, I definitely gonna use them in my games. I mean, I have to. Like, I just I, I love how they look. So I hope you feel inspired. I hope that you 
go out and have fun making some little tavern furniture of your own and take care of yourselves. If you liked the video, consider dropping a like or subscribing. It helps me out with YouTube's metrics and growing my channel. Brush your teeth and clean out your belly button lint and all that. Until the next time I see you.